Good evening. This is the Elliott Wave update for the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100 for Monday, December the 5th, 2022. Uh, the markets kind of remained in the some of the analysis that I presented last night during the Globex session on Sunday and actually maybe completed what I'm labeling possibly as this B wave. So where does that, or excuse me, yeah, the internal B wave. And so it's in the C of B. So let's kind of review quickly. I am leaving this as the A wave. So again, the X wave comes over to this level, right? I know there's been like a shifting around of that X wave, but I'm going to put it here. We get a one, two, three, four, five for wave A. We've got an A, B, a, A, the B wave, and now we're putting in a C wave. So again, A, B, C for the B wave. And we're in that C wave, and I'm now just kind of taking a look. One, two, one, two, three, maybe three, four, five. Could be done. Could be done, or it may, maybe needs a little bit more. Now, I can put some very quick Fibonacci extensions on there so we can take a peek at what we can think for the, actually it's just retracements, forgive me. It's been a long day. I'm just gonna take a look at retracements because we're looking at wave two. Right now it's come down to 70.5. That held, we started to move back up. Initially, wave A of B came down and held 0.618. Then we got that, and now we're coming back down, and it may be finished. If not, we do have potential to move a little bit closer to the start point, which is down to 39.41. Uh, in any case, I kind of would think that we kind of hold here. If not, then it might be something different, and we'll have to recount what we're doing and why and how that is all forming into what is certainly looking like a three-wave structure versus the resumption of the downtrend in the form of an intermediate third wave. Ultimately, that's kind of still what I'm looking for. And again, with the count that I presented on Saturday, and then the re review of, of the count that I am working, both can still be at play here. And what this could be, is that we get the A, they get the B, and now we're going to get a C wave. And so that C wave is going to take us higher. Now, where does that portend to go? I need to go back out to that four-hour chart so we can see where do I measure that C wave. And I can from, well, that didn't work. We want to open this up, bring it out like that. So our B wave is going to be, we're going to now go back over and we're going to use the extensions. We go to the top of A to the bottom of B. And I'm going to, I'm theoretically putting it here because that is the low thus far. We may see an additional drop before we begin to rally. And then we would adjust that level. So right now, C wave would be a five wave affair. And I'd be looking for it to come up above 4109, I think that was. 4110. Okay. And we're 100%, 100% comes in at 4156. Certainly puts it above that high and puts it into a territory. See, because we're running out of, out of fibs on the extensions. We have additional above should it continue to run. But right now, all the markets are basically having a little bit of a problem catching, catching some upside, sustainable upside. Again, those that actually trade in the NASDAQ and the S&P uh, likely saw that Apple Computer found an extremely strong buyer, or buyers this morning, right, at, right after the bell. Bam, took the stock back above. I want to tell you how high it got. Got up to 
150.92, almost 151, and ended up closing down here for 146.63 after reaching a low of 45.77. So, you know, it was a nice little turn for Apple. Now, how does that all fit in? Well, we're looking for this rally to continue. Maybe the buyers show back up, or maybe it's just one down. We're going to go back up. The hourly is a little bit oversold, kind of indicating that it wants to try and turn and fill in some of this uh, downside activity. Resistance. So we have on the outside, those are the support levels coming down. So let me remove them. So we can see just these upside. So the downside we know we got right down to, that was uh, 0 0.70, 0 0.70.5. So it got down pretty low. And we obviously can have a little bit more, but I would not be looking for this to move underneath the low of wave A. And that's actually gonna be over here. And that's gonna be 39.40. So before, again, we were to put in a rally phase to complete the C wave. C wave will be five waves up. Maybe it looks like that. Maybe not. I don't think, don't expect it to be super strong. But in this case, it would need to run at least 100. Needs to clear 4110. And up here, we'd be looking at it going about, um, we're starting at 3987, 4087 is 100. So it's, it's over 100, even if we get back up to that high. So we did see at points today where the S&P was down over 80. So we know that these moves are possible within this market. So I am now going to be looking for that. Again, I'm remaining very fluid on how all of this could be because I cannot, I cannot with certainty say, that we have an A, B, C, X, A, B, C, right? If I move that X over to here, put an A and a B and a C, and that completes it. But this is not what I really would be looking for for the start of an intermediate third wave. Even in that first minute or first minor degree drop, it's kind of interesting because this happened. So is this one, two, one, two, and now we're dropping into third? Possibly, possibly. But that first, these first moves here, sloppy. We get that one, two, one, two. And then we're getting into the third, but it's really got to pick up the pace. Really got to pick up the pace. So in other words, I'd be looking for it to come down and break below that to give us additional confirmation that it is what's in force. And that, it, all of this gets moved over, the B wave gets moved over, and that C wave goes up there, and then a two goes above it. That still remains a potential count. Right now, I'm going to leave it to here, because it looks like we have upsides, because in my heart of hearts, I don't see that they're going to uh, necessarily do that. Although we did at 10 o'clock saw the ISM, which was on, on our sheets was marked green, which is means not necessarily a market mover. I came in and went puffoom, came right down very quickly. And then we took it all and it was in the next one, the next bar, where then it caught some additional support to drop the market and then lasted for the balance of the day. So here we sit. Some of the reality kind of flowed back in and we saw the dollar moving back up off of a low. We saw the bond market starting to tick lower again. Bond markets could be in an ABC, whether that ABC is complete or whether that's just a wave A and now they're putting in a B wave. Same as what we're thinking here in the S&P, all possibilities. So I want to lay that all out right now. 
that there is that possibility that this is all done. And again, I want to open it back up and show you. If I put the C there, and this X goes over here. That's A, B, C, 2. 1, 2, 1, 2, into the third, which will continue. So your first clue, your first indication that that is, this is complete, is they pick up that selling again and they start whacking it lower and get it below 39.40. Once it starts to break below 39.40, I'm going to be more convinced or supportive of upsides over for now. We're just going to start working lower. And so we should do five down, three up, five down, three up, five down. And that would just be likely the first portion of this. So we can get pretty far down in terms of where the market can go, right? This would be all done. We come down, we break below 3940, which is right now where the X wave is marked. And then we start to break down below 37. So we got 39, 39 here where there'll be support. And we have 3,800, 3,700, 3,600, 3,500, ultimately all to be cleared by a intermediate third wave. That's what's going to kick in. It should not take us all that long to get down there. Now, again, this week, light in terms of what's going to come out economic data-wise, we have international trade and goods and services tomorrow morning. We have basically nothing, productivity and costs, which is marked green on Wednesday morning, jobless claims on Thursday morning, and PPI final, which didn't really produce that much of a, the PPI demand did not produce that much of a reaction when it came out. So without the final, and then consumer sentiment. So 8.30 PPI final demand, consumer sentiment at 10 a.m. on Friday. So we do have some, I'm not really looking for many of them to really start pushing things around, but hey, that could be the surprise that we get. So just to quickly recap, right now, let's see. If it continues to break down and we break below that 3940, then I'm going to be shifting this around and you have you need to be in, in the space to say, yep, that's the C and the intermediate two. And we're dropping in the beginning stages of an intermediate third wave. And it should be persistent. This actually, once it got going, it was fairly persistent. And not real fast. It almost seemed like we had some believers, but not enough. So again, sitting on the fence, waiting for the mighty oracle of the Fed to come and inform us of what our direction will be for the coming weeks, months ahead. All right, so that's leaving the S&P. Let's go over to the NASDAQ, which basically sits in the exact same position. Here again, I put the X wave over. It could go there. Then we get an A, B, an A, an A wave, A, B, C for A, A, B, C for B, and a one, two, three, four, five for C. So, in fact, you know what I'll do? I'm going to move that over here on the NASDAQ and leave the other one on the S&P so that if I'm switching between charts, you're going to see both. They're in the exact same count, but now I want to show the other, the other count that we have. So I'm going to go, I'm going to put an A up there, A, B, A, B, C, A, B, uh, yeah. Excuse me. A, B. Sometimes I get caught up in my own counts. It's like, how many ABCs do we need to count? Well, a lot. And then this would be the C way. So if I leave that up there, because again, the, S, the NASDAQ continues to display itself as the more weaker exchange. I don't want to I don't want to do that. I want to do this. So I'm going to come over and I'm going to put that C wave in there. 
And we got to do it in that one. And we're going to put that up. Boom, boom. Put that up there. And put the B wave up there. And just get that done real quick. So what we're saying, and I'm not going to put that two up there, but what we're saying basically is that C wave is done, and so is that wave two. So we'll, I feel we'll know pretty quickly tomorrow which one it'll be, whether it's going to be what I'm showing in the S&P, which is that this was A and this is B like that, and I'm just going to take that away. And now we're going to get a turn. So in this case, if this is the C, then when it's one, two, one, two, and then we're into the third. So we need to pick up the pace with this market kicking into gear a little bit stronger. And it might do that tomorrow. And then what would support it is a break below 11,465. That would kind of conclude that this is likely all in place. Otherwise, we might have to move it back around again if this is only wave A of the second ABC, because this would be the X down here, and that's the first A, and then this is A, B, and now we're in that C wave, right? So we have the A, B, into the C wave down, one, two, three, four, five, that would go up there. I'm going to actually take it away because I don't want to leave it there. But that would be the other side. So what we got going on is we are seeing the weakness. This basically was, I can't really see it. This was our opening. That was them running up Apple and then just killing it and then bringing the rest of the market down and then finally bringing Apple down, which finished down $1.18 versus finishing up three or something as it was. So this is what we get. This is what we have. Now, if we're looking for that downside here, first I will put, if we're looking for that, I'm just not according to this count, but according to would be over here. And so it didn't come down and take out that low from Friday. Hmm. But I'll put it here anyway. We have upside potential and it really does rattle around. Here's that 12,500. And I've been telling you, it keeps showing up, keeps showing up. And this is the trend line from the all-time high through the March highs, through the, um... now I got to go back and take a look. You have to forgive me. There's the highs that we had in November. So then these are the March of 2022 highs. These are the August highs. And where it would come in if we continued to move higher and reach up and hit that level. We're looking at all the way up here. 12,530, so 12,500. So, but before that, we have 12,242, 12,425, excuse me. And that would be where wave C would be equal to wave A, very common. Actually, we have 12,165 and it puts in a new high. And that would be where wave C would be equal to 0.618 of <clears throat> wave A. And that also fits pretty well. So again, this is the X and this is the A and this is the B, the C wave up has all these levels that it could find that resistance. Now, if indeed that C wave and that intermediate two are complete, and we go back out, let's go back out to that daily and we're looking at the start and then we're going to be using our extensions and we're going to go up to that top and go back down to the hourly chart and your first supports at 11,376 so that first one down that's got a lot more to go then we have 10,901 10,517 10,132 9849 9585 and we're coming down to 889 where wave 
three would be equal to wave one. And I think we come in a little bit lower than all of that. Somewhere down in here, do a wave four. I do a, These would be intermediate. Do an intermediate four, intermediate five. And I think that intermediate five could end up down here somewhere. Now we're looking at the March 2020 lows, all in that area. And that then, my friends, would complete the primary C wave and the, in, the cycle wave A. Now, the alternate view that I presented on Saturday remains a factor here. If this all pans out differently and we're going to continue to rally, First of all, we got 12,500. Above that, we can find additional numbers which so is going to take us above 13, maybe 13.2. What we do know we cannot cross above is here. 13,741. Is it? No, 13,600. Nah, come on, tell me what that one is. Right there, right there. 13,741. That's where, as a wave two, it cannot go above. As a primary B wave, right? Remember, if I switch all this back around again, then, yep, yeah, it can most certainly go above that. In fact, we'd be looking for it. But right now, no. So take that back, go back down to that hourly conclusion. Now, for tomorrow, I think we see additional downside. If we stop, hold that level, and start to rally with any intensity, then you're going to know that gets moved. It turns into an A, that turns into a B, and we're back off in the C wave rally. I'm leading it that way because I'm trusting that you're going to be able to remember this. And as I'm saying it, because you don't want to be surprised, say, well, no, he said that was the end. Because it only fits if we continue to move lower. The alternate, even within the intermediate wave two count, is that the X wave comes over here. This is A, we're in a B, and we're going to do a C. Both are very applicable. So the S&P carries that one. That's the one that I put here. A, B, you get a C wave up. You just got to remember that if that's what's in, the, in force, then this gets changed to an A, that gets put in as a B, and we got that C wave up, okay? And you also know, I, I marked out all the levels that we have, all the way up to 12,500, but I think that's eventually where it would go. All right, I'm gonna kind of finish it up right there for today, and the next update will be on Tuesday, December the 6th.